Today is the 17th of September, 2012. We're in uh, Troy, New York, at the Troy Senior Center. Uh, sir, for the record, would you please state your full name and your date and place of birth, please? Donald F. Trudeau. I was born in Cohoes, New York. And when were you born? 83121. Makes me 91. Okay. Did you attend school there? I attend school at Cohoes Public Schools, mm -hmm. St. Agnes School, and St. Agnes Church. Yes. And did you graduate from high school? I got into the high school and I quit to go into three C's, the CCC camp. And what year was that? Oh my, I forget what year it was, but... Was it 1939? No, I think it was 1937 or 36. 36. 1936, okay. <clears throat> now that's the Civilian Con Conservation Corps. Yes. And what did you do there? We were in forestry work in Avril Park. Oh. They called it the Alps Mountains. Mm -hmm. So you said forestry work. Were you thinning out trees or what were you doing? Well, they, we had two or three different projects in our company. Mm -hmm. Some were on the stream control. Now that was the water coming around was washing away the bank of the trees and also the farmland. So they had to build brickwork to keep the water from washing away the earth. I see. That was one. Then we were in what they call blister rust. That was killing the moth, gypsy moth they call it. Because the gypsy moth eggs was mm -hmm. killing the white pine trees. So we would line up in a line and everybody had a knife, a curved knife, with a number on it, like an upside down two or, or, or L or P or whatever. And we're all lined up so the forester would know everybody's mark. Mm -hmm. And you marked and you went up and down and all around the tree, looking for this egg cluster. Because an egg cluster would have eight or nine thousand eggs. Mm -hmm. And when the young ones would grow, they would be eat through the pine needle. And that would work through the, the trunk of the tree mm -hmm. and kill the tree. Now, if you saw those clusters, did you take them down and... Yeah, yes, they would clean that for us like a park. Mm -hmm. Every brush, every little thing, and burn it. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of living quarters did you have? Did you Just stay there? Just like the army, we had barracks. Did you wear any kind of uniform? What the army? <laughs> what the Army gave us. Oh, I see. Yeah. And more importantly, did they pay you for it? We got $30 a month pay, uh -huh. 25 went home to our parents, and we got five. Okay. Well, did, did $5 last you for a month? $5 for cigarettes, smokes, a glass of beer, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> and how long did you stay with the CCC? I stayed the whole two years. All right. That's in the Alps. Okay. Now at the end of those two years, what did you do after that? Well, I, I had to get out. So I wasn't doing anything, wasn't working or anything, and I quit school. So I went back to City Hall and I said to him, how can I go back in the three C's? He says, you can't, you had two years, that's it. That was your limit. Uh -huh. See, Roosevelt started the CCC camp, he started the WPA, out of other projects, mm -hmm. and he, he was good. And I love that CCC camp, I loved it. He had three good meals, good bunk, good shows. It was like living home, it was beautiful. Now, did you work in the winter time too? Oh yeah, winter was the best, because you know, west leaves and the trees. Uh-huh, yeah. okay. So I, anyway, that man called me back when I started walking out the door at City Hall, he said, Hey, why don't you sign up again? He said, this time, leave out your middle initial. Oh. <laughs> so I went in for three, two more years. <laughs> but oh. I didn't go to the up. They put me at Twin Falls and Riggins, Idaho. Those are roads through the mountains. Really? 
that was very educational. We learned how to use trucks, bulldozers, dynamite, TNT, putting you down in a boat's and seat with a mm -hmm. cable, with a drill on you, drilling holes in the mountain, about a foot long. Then they would send you down in mud and a fuse to put on the dynamite or TNT. Then they would raise you up. Would they do that for about three miles long? Uh huh. I was in the army when they did that. There were many other men. Yep. And then after you got out of there, they uh, fire in a hole, and then get out of that area, and they blow it. Yep. And then the bulldozers would come in and push the rock off the mountains, and then other men would come in and concrete the roads and mm -hmm. build roads through the mountains. So you were the very interesting. So you learned a pretty good trade then. Well, we learned then. how to use bulldozers, trucks, and everything. Dynamite, mm -hmm. wicks, fuses. Okay. Now very educational. After, after that uh, period, was that when you ended up joining the National Guard? Yeah, I come out and uh, my friend John, his name was John Purcell. And he said, let's, let's get down and join the guards. He, he knew a couple of people in there. Mm -hmm. And we did. And, the mate, uh, Captain For Forget or Forget, something like that. Yeah. Was Captain at that time. And I see Captain Hennessy was the second lieutenant. He became Captain. And we were in there, I don't know how long, but then we went to Decal Junction up near the Canadian border mm -hmm. for maneuvers. Man, that was a cold there. <laughs> And uh, but then, just before the war, we went to uh, Fort McCallum, Alabama. Yep. I think it was Fort McCallum. Yes. And uh, we were there, and uh, of course. You were only supposed to be there a year, right? Yeah. Well, be before our year was up, I think Roosevelt died. I remember I cried at them. Anyway. Well, well actually, Roosevelt, uh, Roosevelt died in 1945. 45? Yeah. Well, it must have been near there because I think we were in Fort McClellan when he died. Okay, well, Fort McClellan was 1940. No, I think it was. On your... It was just before the war broke out. Okay. So the war broke out in 41. You're, you're talking about Franklin Roosevelt, the president? You're talking about the President Roosevelt? President Roosevelt. Yeah, he, he died, I think it was April of 1945. But, but anyways, uh, we'll, we'll continue on with the, with the anyway, story. When that war broke out, within 20 minutes, we had our first bags, we had two bags, yep. A and B. And, uh, Within 20 minutes, we were on a truck going south. Going to the railroad station, getting on a train, going to California, from California on the ship, going to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Then when we got there. Now, now let me ask you, did you get sick, seasick going to Hawaii? I got uh, mixed up, but I, I didn't vomit or nothing. Some of the mm -hmm. guys got vomited. They, they, couldn't, they were so weak, they couldn't go to dinner or breakfast. Uh -huh. I didn't, no, it didn't bother me that bad. Okay. Uh, I was pretty good. All right. So, so you ended up uh, you ended up going to Hawaii after after uh, the Fort McCallum. Well, after uh, Pearl Harbor was attacked. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. And then when we got in Hawaii, we had to change ships to a smaller ship. Mm -hmm. it's that big ship we were on, my God. I think there was almost a division on there. You could play baseball on the decks. Do you recall the name of the ship by chance? Well, I think there was four of them. And I think one of them hit the iceberg and sank years ago. My father had a book on that. Hmm. And uh, okay. see, now John would know, those guys would know the name of that ship. Mm -hmm. I knew it, but I can't think of it. Okay, was it an American? Uh, it was a four smokestacker. 
Okay, so it's pretty good, pretty good sized ship. Oh, very good. What was it by chance? The Mauritania? There was something like that. Okay. Lusitania or that kind of thing. I think. Well, you're, you're I think right. There was, was the Aquitania, Aquitania, the Aquitania, and the Mauritania. Yeah. I think that was okay. Aquitania. Okay. Yep. I knew, I knew they uh, used that for crew transport. Okay. So we had to get on a smaller ship. To go to the big island, Hawaii. Yeah. And we got there and uh, got off the ship and we went to a little town called Pahoa, Hawaii. And uh, we used to go in the priest's house to watch radio. I don't think TV was no. that good. I don't think he had a TV, but radio. Mm -hmm. And some of the guys were killing the mosquitoes, and the priest got mad. <laughs> Don't you kill those mosquitoes, leave them alone. Jeez, you're biting this one. If you got malaria, uh, what's that, a little malaria? Uh, it's just like malaria, only it goes away. Malaria stays with you. Right. My brother-in-law had that, and he died with it, too. Oh, there was like and a... He was in the same office, big. There was encephalitis and there was dengue fever and... Malaria and... Oh, I can't think of that other sickness. Well, if you get that other sickness, you don't live. You die. Oh, okay. Hmm. So, so how long did you stay in Hawaii for? Was it a year you guys were there? All the time we were there, we were on that big island a year and a half, mm -hmm. waiting for material to be built and the states here to be shipped over to us. Mm -hmm. I can tell you a story on that. Sure. <laughs> we had outside latrines in Hawaii. Uh -huh. like, uh, I can't name it a mountain we were on. This is outside of Hilo, the, the city. And uh, we had outside latrines. So these two men were on latrine duty. So one guy and I told hey, let's go do some grenades and drop them in the hole. Chase the flies out. We had the skin in it around. Yep. That poor guy we never seen him after that. They won't smoke and they said, well, that would be used white phosphorus. Ooh. White phosphorus is nothing but a ball of fire. Yep. And they pull that pin and drop him in and looked in. We never seen him again. They shipped them right out. Ooh. They said they were burnt from the shoulders right out. Jeez. I've seen those white flowers. I've seen them on planes drop them. Mm -hmm. They can run a line from here to Alabama. Fire. To burn that okay. So on Hawaii, did you do a lot of training? Oh yeah, we did, oh, yeah. We did beach, beach position. We, had a, we were given picks and shovels because we had to do beach, beach positions, you know? Mm -hmm. Fox holes and watch in case any invasions ran away. Okay. I'll tell you a story about that too. <laughs> well, anyway, each position job. And we were digging low so that the jeeps could get in to the beach position. You would hit that gravel rock and that pick would just bounce back at oh. it. It was tough. Did you get much time off in Hawaii? Did we get much time off? Yeah. Oh, sure. We went to town almost every other night. Oh. And uh, that got me in trouble. I got busted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because in Pahoa, I got acquainted with a family. Yeah. A Japanese family. And then uh, I, I didn't have a license. All you had to do was go to City Hall, give them 50 cents, sign your name. They give you a license to drive. Oh, really? You didn't see, have to take see, it. See, Hawaii fast. was not a state uh -huh. at that time. That's why I always said Obama, if he was born in Hawaii, he shouldn't be president. Hmm. You got to be born in the United States to become president, yeah. from what I understand. Or a territory of the United States, which yeah, Hawaii it, it was. It was a, a territory, yeah. yeah, but it wasn't a state.
Yeah, I don't think they became a state till I think it was 1959 or so. Yeah, later on. Yeah. But anyways... Uh, oh, I took this girl out for a ride, and she was going to show me the island. Uh-huh. So I had a few drinks, <laughs> a couple of drinks in me, and on the way back, a cop stopped us, and because of her being in the car with me, and I'm in uniform. Now, what kind of car was it? Was it a Jeep, or...? It wasn't good for a soldier to be with the Japanese, even though, you know, they were a territory. Yeah. So anyway, he stopped me. I had to go to Stockade, and uh, they called up. I, I think Hennessy was our captain. And Hennessy said to him over the phone, what's his name? He said, Trudeau. He said, hello, I don't stay there. So, <laughs> the mayor of Troy was an officer. I forget his name. He came down and signed me out anyway. I got three, two, two weeks later, I got made again. So. Well, what rank were you? The, the, I was a corporal, and then I made sergeant. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you stayed in Hawaii. I got, I got busted from sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> See, I like my outside. I like my freedom. Uh huh. I did. Okay. But I, I got back to Corvo again. Mm -hmm. So you, you stayed on Hawaii for a year and a half. A year and a half waiting for the material to come over. Okay. That's, uh, you know, when we went over, we had wrap wagons, mm -hmm. bridges, the old helmets, uh, the Springfield, the oh, yeah. three rifle, a clip of eight, I think that took, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So we had to wait for the M1s and the M16s. Okay. When you were on Hawaii, were you staying in a, any sort of school, barracks or school tent? Building. Oh, school? School village, yeah. Oh, okay. And how was your food there? Oh, yeah. it was good. And then we went to another area. We had to cut down the trees. And the first building we built was the, uh, the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So the men could eat in the canteen. Okay. And uh, then we had to smooth the ground off, put a, a floor down for the uh, tents. Okay. So we call that Tent City. And I think there was a whole regiment, went by regiment. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was comfortable because we had bumps and everything. Mm -hmm. All that came from the States. Now, did many people come down with uh, malaria in Hawaii at all? Not so much in Hawaii, but outside of Hawaii, there was a lot of malaria. I heard about it, but uh, I never got it. Okay. Did they make you take that Adabrine? Yeah, Adabrine. Okay. I remember that Adabrine tablet, yeah. yeah. The off officer had to give it to you, and you had to take it in front of them. Yeah, it was so you wouldn't get malaria, and it turned your skin yellow, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, and your eyes too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where did you go when you left Hawaii? Oh, I'll tell you where I went. I signed up for, uh, uh, I forget what they call it. Anyway, I went to Christmas Island. That was a little island. Mm -hmm. Nothing there but coconut trees and one family. That family was there to get the coconut shells where they fell from the tree because that would gather water and water would gather mosquitoes. So their job was to gather all that stuff, pile it, and later on put it in bags or something and they would take it out. What they did with it, I don't know. Oh. But when we got there, they took these, that one family off. We were only at one, one battalion there. There was a little uh, artillery there. That was just for our own protection. Uh -huh. And uh, artillery, Air, oh, Air Force. We had the P-40 airplanes and P-39s. Okay. And they would go out and do a morning and dawn, evening patrol so many miles around the, uh, our island, which was close, pretty close to Japan. I don't know how far, but 
we're two degrees, I think, above the equator. In Canton Island, a friend of mine is John Gould, who's on our island. They had one tree that chopped that down so the enemy couldn't use it for a reference point. Uh -huh. for, for gunnery, you know. Mm -hmm. And he was on Canton Island, I was on Christmas Island. How long were you on Christmas Island for? Uh, about six months. Then when I went back, I didn't go back in the 105th. I went back in the 165th. Now I heard all about that 165th because my brother-in-law at World War I was in it. It was called the Fighting 69. Oh yeah. The Fighting Irish. Yeah. And uh, he, he used to tell me all about that. And that's the outfit I wanted. That's wow. why I left Christmas Island. But it was still in the 27th Division. Yep. It hmm. was a regiment, but still in the division. Okay, so you were with the 106. And where did you go with the 106? Well, let's see. You mean the first offensive operation? Yep. It wasn't side pan. It was all. Oh. 19, no, it wasn't made, and that, no. that was a bigger one. We, uh, it was a one regiment operation, and it all, we took it in three days. It was a small island. It was it in a week time, was it? Could, it could have been in a week time, yes, I think it was. It was a small island, it only took three days to take it. Okay. And that was the 165th that took it. Okay. And I was in the 165th. Now, were you acting as an infantry man? Oh yeah. Well, I'll tell you. I, I, I'd say infantry, but I was in the uh, anti tank company. Okay. I wasn't in a I wasn't in a rifle company. Hmm. And I at that time we had the thirty seven newer anti tank gun. And then after we got back to Hawaii. Well, well let. Let me uh, just stop you there. Uh, did you have any direct encounters with the Japanese? Oh yeah. Then? Oh yeah. I had a truck. Uh, oh, his name was Jackie Wright. The, the platoon. I call him platoon sergeant. The squad sergeant, really. Uh, he was in charge of our gun. Uh huh. Let's really have a shot at that. And I saw a truck about 300, 400 yards. Way. It was a Japanese. Jack okay. So he said, How many weeks are you going to take? I said, Yeah, he said, Go. It's very slow. I said, I'll aim at the border. So I did. I hit the truck. It didn't blow up. I was surprised. But it tipped over. Huh. And it's about 25, maybe 30, I don't know how many, got out of that truck and was running around. And they think they, the guys picked them off. Ah. Uh -huh. so Huh. So that was your first encounter with the Japanese? Yeah. And you weren't wounded then, were you? Pardon? You weren't wounded on in a week time. Oh, no. No, not okay. at all. It was Saipan, Okinawa, and a couple of other, I forget the other one. Okay. Macon and Mariana Islands. Marianas. And Tinian. And the Battle of Okinawa. The Saipan and Okinawa was, was the worst. It was the worst? Okay, you want you want to tell us about about those? Well, I can only tell you one about Saipan, really. Uh, well, that Saipan, I think, was the worst of all of them because when we we were told to go in after we got off the Higgin marches to go in a thousand yards and dig in. Mm -hmm. In other words, five holes, A company, B company, C company, I. and then the one hundred sixty fifth was on the right of the 105th. They had the high ground. Now, now, were you with the 165th at that point? Were you with the 165th? No, no, I wasn't. You were? Yeah, I think I was, yeah. That's right, too, because because he was, they were using me for a runner. I remember, mm -hmm. there was one particular time, the 105th was here, when, like I said, the 165th was here. They picked me for a runner because I swallow high and fast, and the 105th was spread too far to the left. So I was supposed to go to, I think O'Brien was a colonel. Yep. Close, 
close the company in to the 160 unit because the enemy could go through mm -hmm. because there's nobody there. So that was my job running back and forth. Mm -hmm. Now, what about snipers there? Did you have a lot of problems with snipers? Yeah, I did myself. I had eight rounds in my M1 rifle. And I was going to the 105th this particular day. I don't know what day it was. Could have been Sunday, Monday, that day. But anyway, I didn't get to the 105th. And, and uh, I spotted 15, 20 Japs walking down the road. Uh oh. What am I going to do? You know, I'm talking to myself. So I looked around, and just off the, see, the, that was the, the Japanese had a, what do you call it? Uh, a seaplane base, seaplane. The, the plane would land in the water and come up, come up on land. Okay. Well, a lot of it was sand. Well, this Japanese tank was knocked out that I saw. But he must have made a left sharp turn. When he did, he threw a track. And, and the tank was this way, or this way rather. But this was open on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I ran around the tank, pushed the dirt away, and I got under the tank. So I said to myself, you don't bother me, I don't bother you. <laughs> I only had eight rounds left in yeah. my rifle, and there was 15, 20 of them. So, even if I got 10 or 15, there should be more left yeah. to get me. So I, you go your way, I'll go. So they passed right by, didn't bother me at all. Hmm. Didn't look under it, yeah. but they did look in it though. Oh, they did. That, your heart must have been beating in your chest, wasn't it? <laughs> I, I was shit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that, that's something that happened. Okay. Now, do you, do you remember the bonsai charge there? The bonsai? Oh, yeah, yeah, my God. You see, I can tell you a story on that. What they did, and, and they really used their head. The Japanese weren't dumb. They were smart. They sent through all the men, women, and children first. Mm -hmm. They had pitch shells. Rooms, anything, any kind of weapon they could handle to use on us. And that, and, uh, and see, when, when you're in a line, you're in squad formation, first, second, third squad. Yep. This squad will shoot to the right. The second squad will shoot to the left. That way there you had crossfire. Yep. And you were, we were told to shoot no more than two foot above the ground. Because it's pitch dark, you couldn't see your hand in front of you. Now they made their charge, and our one of the lieutenants, King, his name was, and uh, Spike Mayo told me this, so I wasn't there. He got a pitchfork in back of his neck, that's how he died. And Paco Cristini, he was born and raised on the island in Cohoes, he got his right arm shot. So John Cedar, a friend of mine, mm -hmm. was supposed to be with me here. Uh, him and uh, a couple other guys carried Paco up, you know, yep. back to the medics. Mm -hmm. the, the, they used it, and then after the, the civilians made their charge, and then the Japanese army made their charge. Now I heard there was, they were screaming and yelling as they were coming. Pardon? Was there a lot of screaming and yelling as they were coming oh, down? Oh, they did scream themselves. That's the way they made a charge to scare you. Yeah. Yeah, they did that. And uh, we found out after that, we lost half of, I'd say more than half of our men there in that one charge. Now, now was your position overrun? It was overrun, yeah. And did you, did you have to retreat or what happened? Well, well we had a regiment in reserve. Mm -hmm. They finished the ones that got through. Yeah. But what, what happened before they made their charge, the ones that wouldn't make their charge, the civilians that wouldn't make their charge, this was at the end of the island. I knew the name of that shore, but it was 300 foot high, all nothing but rocks. 
Where they committed suicide and jumped? Some of them committed suicide. The ones I did, they faced the ocean and the Japanese would push them off. Huh. Kill their own people. Hmm. Because they wouldn't make the charge. That's the story we heard. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, you were, well, when were you wounded? Were you wounded during that attack, or? I was wounded four or five times, but I, I can only remember two or three, and, and, and they were nothing like ricochets. Uh-huh. I think it hit me and a, me and a guy from P P Pomona, Pomona, California. We were in a flats hole. We were just outside of the, the 165th CP. Oh, maybe about 100, 200 yards outside of it. And they got hit with, we heard, German 88 mm -hmm. houses, guns. That's a shell about that big. And, and uh, this guy that was with me, he got food 10 foot outside the hole. I was still in the hole, and I'd seen him, but I couldn't go to him because I was afraid to get out of the hole. And I got hit with mud right here. Up until this day, I can't hear much out of this ear. Uh -huh. And I did have a bloody nose, two black eyes. And I had a medic, the medic come over. You're okay, back to your outfit. Mm -hmm. Back to my company. Now, during that bonsai attack, were you involved in any close quarters or hand-to-hand -hand combat? Oh, uh, we come close. Uh -huh. Personally, I wasn't. Okay. But we did, I think it was a right flank got most of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. After, after that attack, what, what happened? Your, your outfit was devastated. You guys had lost a lot of men. Well, then, then they had to go, go to the reserve mm -hmm. and bring them up yeah. okay. to fill up the company. Well, what, what happened to you? Did you did you end up staying there for a while? Oh, I wasn't wounded enough to, to go out of action, no. Okay, so so you continued to stay on site camp after that? Yeah, we stayed there, I don't know how many months before we were taken out. I'm trying to think of where we went after we left there. The Mariana Islands. What? The Mariana Islands, you said, after Saipan. I don't remember that. And, and you, you said Okinawa was bad too, right? Well, when we got back on the ship, I thought we went back to Hawaii. You went to Tinian in 1944. Could have been. You're right. Battle of Tinian, and then in 1945, the Battle of Okinawa. Could have been. Okay. Could have been. You're right. I think you're right. Tell them about when you got hit in the knee. <laughs> well, I got a scar from that, but that's it. Well, did you get the Purple Heart? No, I don't think I did. Uh, you, you should have. Well, uh, they say once you're treated by a medic, you, you deserve one. Right, and I mean, you, you could, it's, it's still not too late to get that, you could put in for it. But uh, you, how did that happen? And that, that was rifle fire. Rifle fire, okay. Yeah, I, I got grazed. Okay. I got hit good, which my brother-in-law did, he got his kneecap shot off. Oof. And he walked with a crooked leg all yeah. his life. Mm. I just got grazed. But you said, if you said that, that you, if you told them that you were hurt, that you would have to stay longer. So you said you didn't, you didn't say that you got hurt in order to get the purple heart. Yeah, I think you had to be quartered or something. There's a, some, some trick to it. I don't know what it is. They asked you maybe you had to be treated by a doctor. Okay. You went to an aid station or something. This was just a medic. I thought you said if you if you told them that, that you were injured, that they kept you for an extra month and you wanted to go home. 
You didn't want to stay any longer. I didn't give you no extra money. I went right back in the line. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, do you recall uh, what it was like when, when you heard about the atomic bomb being dropped and the war ending? I was, where was I? In Okinawa, I think. Yeah, that was in August of 1945. They, they dropped the bomb. Yeah. And I think they dropped one, two, I think they dropped four altogether. No, it was just two atomic bombs they dropped. Two? Yeah. I thought it was four. Anyway, it, it didn't bother us, but we were scared that we would get from the wind. Oh, okay, the atomic yeah. fallout. The dust. Now, I see that you were uh, discharged in uh, September 22nd, 1945. So, so you probably left um, Hawaii. No, I think we, I went, I remember, I, see that's something else, I can't remember what island I was on. Anyway, they sent me down to the beach. I got down there and there was only two other guys, one or two other guys there. Mm -hmm. And I said, they must have made a mistake. Nothing but a beach. Uh -huh. No doctor, nothing, you know. And uh, then another guy would come down, then another. Before I knew it, there were 400 of us. Oh. And uh, we got on the ship. We never got back to Hawaii. You went straight to the States? I think we came straight to the States. So that was probably the early part of September you got on the boat. I, I think I got charged September 22nd. I yes. At Yeah, whereabouts did you get discharged from? Where did they discharge you from? I knew the place because the tents had holes in them, the rain would come through, and it was in New Jersey. In New York. Oh, was it Fort Dix? I, I think it was. Okay. And the rain would come through and everything, but they had holes in the canvas. And oh. Anyway, I was there maybe a week and I was gone. Now, you got discharged because of the point system, right? Pardon? You had, you had to have a number of points to be discharged. So you probably had a, you were in since 1940, when the... 39, I think. You guys, I believe, was, were federalized in 1940, oh, so, yeah. so you had a lot of points. Yeah. So you were probably one of the, uh, you got a discharge pretty fairly early because of your Good. points. Okay. So once, once you were discharged, did you come back to Troy? No, I went back to Cahoke, where I was born. Okay. And uh, then I, I went to work in, like, the, yeah, Cahoke's had a lot of weaving mills, yeah. cotton mills, and that's where I worked. Okay. Did I, you? I forget the name of that mill. Anyway, our boss, I remember him, in a cutter, where the goods would go through, and it was like a, a lawnmower, we cut the goods, make cotton out of it. Uh -huh. He got his arm cut. You got your wrist, it was cool, you right in. Cut you up. He got his arm cut. Out. Allegheny Ludlum. That, that was in the homes. Allegheny Ludlum Steel. Oh, that was later. Oh, okay, you went to work for Allegheny then. Oh, yeah, I, I worked there close to 30 years, 29 years, and I had a heart trouble. Oh, okay. When, when did you end up retiring? Pardon? When did you retire? <laughs> Can't remember. Okay. Now, did you join any veterans organizations? Like the uh, VFW or the American Legion? Or? Okay. I used to go to the American Legion in Cohozo for a beer once in a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did, did you uh, stay in contact with any of the guys who were in the service? Oh, with? Yeah. oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you attend any kind of reunions at all? I think we did have a couple of parties, but I can't remember. Okay. Now, uh, going back to uh, Saipan, uh, do you recall the controversy between the 27th Division, there was General Smith, 
Two Smiths. And, and the Marine Corps had uh, Howlin', Howlin' Mad Smith. They fought like hell. <laughs> they were bitter enemies. Yeah. Of course, the Marines, you know, I kid my kid brother, he went in the Marines. And uh, where the hell was it? After the war. Was it Korea? Korea. <laughs> yeah, he was in the I, I called him the oh, ho boy. <laughs> <laughs> Gum ho boy. Uh -huh. I hear about the Marines. I, I pity them poor guys. They got slaughtered. Yeah, uh, Smith, the Marine Corps Smith ended up, he was in charge of the whole operation and he ended up uh, relieving uh, General Smith uh, of the 27th Division. He relieved him of duty because he didn't, he didn't think uh, that the 27th was moving fast enough. They fought like hell, the two of them. Yeah, two generals. Yeah. I think there were about four star generals. I, I don't recall how many stars, but later on they realized that, uh, you know, General S Smith from the uh, 27th Division was doing the right thing. They had uh, thicker terrain and were uh, under heavy fire a lot of the time, so. Yeah, I think. He was I, basically exonerated. Yeah, they say a lot of us wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that general mm -hmm. holding us back. Yeah. If we would make a quick charge, we would have been knocked off. Yeah. So, how do you think your time in the service changed or affected your life? A lot. Mm -hmm. a lot. It made me better. <laughs> Throughout when I got out in 1945, I quit drinking completely. I didn't touch a cigarette, and I didn't touch a beer until just lately here. They had a parade in the hose, uh -huh. and, and uh, some, I don't know, maybe the mayor or what, they come in and he brought beers first, and I had a beer in front of me, and I must have drank that much. Uh -huh. Oh, I hated it. <laughs> I, I was my taste. Uh -huh. and, I, and I used to drink it. I, I drank in every bar in Cohoes. Uh -huh. What do we remember? Sansbury's in Cohoes? Well, not no. Sansbury's on White Street, and then there was Corby's in Northside. Hmm. Then we went to Troy quite a bit. Okay. Now, when did you get married? Uh, that's a good question. 46, 47. You were married for 49 years to Phyllis, who passed away in 1992. I was married 40 years, yeah. Okay, any children? No, she had two by a previous marriage. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I, I did have grandchildren. Okay. Now, what rank were you when you were discharged? Were you a sergeant when you were discharged? Yeah, I was. Were you a sergeant when you were discharged from the from the army? Uh, the first thing I did was look for work. No, I, I say, what rank were you? Were you a sergeant? Oh, what rank? Yeah. I think I, think I was a corporal, or a PFC, something like that. Okay. Did you uh, did you make use of that uh, what they call the fifty two twenty club? No, I I heard yeah, of that. Yeah, they, they give you uh, twenty dollars. Uh, Oh yeah, that? when we were discharged, I had to go down to the city of Troy. Yes, I, I got that. Yeah, yeah. what was it, like $20 a, a week for 52 weeks? 52 weeks, yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah, I, was, I got that. Okay. You're right. Now, so you're you, bringing back. <laughs> now what about the GI Bill? Did you uh, buy a home with it or anything? Or? No. So you didn't make use of it? No, but I did, when I went to work at Al Damon, I did buy a home. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, and you had some information about about him. Uh, I I have down that he was wounded by shrapnel twice in the hand and knee. He earned six additional combat medals, and he was awarded medals for expert in combat weaponry and expert in infantry combat. Yeah, I was a BAR man, Brownie or I, I was never in the water. Yep. Never in that platoon. 
Well, did you get the uh, combat infantry badge? Oh, yeah, I got that. Okay. Expert infantry combat badge. Okay. So and you got two of them. <laughs> and you mentioned he was nominated for an award as, his as a citizen. He received his Lifetime Achievement Award last year. Do you want to tell us about that? Um, it's an award for his military service. Uh -huh. And um, it's through the Capital District Senior Issues Forum um, out of Glenmont, New York. And it's a very prestigious mm -hmm. award to receive. And all of our um, politicians and big wigs were there. To, all of our politicians came and you received so many awards from like our county executive. And, yeah. and we're, we're a big major in the group that's why joining the parade and all that introduced us. And also, Donald go. He meets once a month uh -huh. with his buddies the first Tuesday of every month. Oh, we have breakfast up to Babes on Bedford Street co-host. Okay. And uh, that we've been doing that since we were discharged. Oh. And they get their hair cut together. <laughs> <laughs> and and every everybody was married. They're still married. Yeah. Any other stories or anything that comes to mind that we didn't touch on? That... I like the story about that. When you got hit in the knee, you told me it was a big piece of metal. It was and, shrapnel. 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 and it went right down to the bone, you said. Well, it hit the bone, yeah. Yeah, and you said it was hot. And it, Very hot. And yeah. they pulled it out and they wrapped it up up your leg. They didn't pull it out, it was next to me on the ground. Oh. But they wrapped up his leg and said, get back out there. Yeah. Now, did you pick that up as a souvenir? No. No? <laughs> I was too busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And, oh, and I'll tell you another story. I went to a dentist and I got a couple of root canals, you know. And he says to me, 91, he said, or 90 I was at the time. Uh, he said to me, how come you still got your teeth? I said, well, in a service, we didn't have a toothbrush, we didn't have toothpaste, and uh, you know, we were brushing our teeth. So we got a rag, went down to the ocean, we got permission to go to the ocean, wet it, take the sand, clean our teeth. <laughs> That's why I still got my teeth. <laughs> it must have worked then, huh? That's what he said, it must have did the <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other questions? Well, that's the first time I heard of a pizza in my life. Pizza? In Saipan. Really? We were in a rest area in Saipan, and this guy from Gazi from Brooklyn, New York, was in our company. And he says, Don, you go get a pot. Oh, yeah, where the hell am I going to go get a pot? <laughs> and you go get tomatoes, you go get this, and you go. Give us all the jobs. So, yeah. You know, we used to. The Japanese, when they buried their dead, they dig the bones up, they put them in a cave, uh -huh. they paint all dragons on the face to mm. chase away the evil spirits. Oh. And they put them in these caves. Well, but, I know. So I went in the cave, shook out the bones, <laughs> put a little water. <laughs> that was the pot he made the pizza in. Oh my god. <laughs> Now, speaking of speaking of caves, did you go into many of those caves? Uh, I, I heard with the mopping up after, like the bonsai. We used to get in them caves to get out of the artillery fire. Uh huh. See, some of our own shells would show fall on us; they fall short. Being a kind of the powder they put in mm -hmm. could be damp or wet. Mm -hmm. would, would push that shell, so they fall short. A lot of them would drop on us too. Oh. So we used to get in these little caves to get out of that artillery fire. Yeah. Now, I know that a lot of the Japanese were were uh, hiding out in caves. Did, did you guys have to throw grenades in or go in with a flamethrower or anything? Or? TNT, uh, assassin charges, this big. Okay, you just throw them in there? Put the fuel, light the fuse. 
throw it in the can if they didn't come out. Okay. We, uh, we had interpreters, Japanese, tell them to please come out. You won't be harmed, and this and that. If they didn't come out, they sealed the can up. Mm -hmm. They did. Yeah. Hmm. Now, did, did you, uh, did you ever eat any of the Japanese food over there? I heard a story, uh, somebody, somebody said they went into a cave and they found cans of like sardines and beans that were uh, never, from the I Japanese. Never, I never ate anything I found, no, but I did eat in their homes uh -huh. like in Hawaii. You know. Right. Okay. What about the civilians? on uh, Saipan. Did you have much contact with any of them at all? Not much. They wouldn't... You no, know, they're, they're most of we were put in a compound. Okay. We, we never seen much of them. Mm -hmm. The only time we've seen them is when we captured them. Mm -hmm. Then the MPs would take over. Now what about Japanese POWs? Did you, see, did, you see many, did you have many of them surrender? Very, I don't think I ever saw one surrender. They mm. killed themselves first. Yeah. Harry Carey. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? All right. Well, thank you so much for your interview. It's been a real pleasure. I'll get home and I'll say, gee, why didn't I say this? <laughs> why then it starts coming. I lost my mind completely. Well, uh, no, you did an excellent job. You know what I was just thinking of when you told me about the the holes that you had to get in and how you would stagger them. Fox Fox holes. Fox holes. And the man that ran into the hole and the guy threw the guy in the next hole and then he threw him off the off the ledge. Oh, oh. I can't describe it. <laughs> Arline, you know, you you don't when you're in a line in combat, it's not a straight line. Right. You're staggered. So, yep. so you can't get hit. Well, these two guys were uh, like on the skyline. We, we could see them up there. You know, if they stood up on the foxhole, well, some Jap got in that hole with them. <laughs> they didn't know what they had to do. The, their, their sidearm, their pistol was in the mud. They couldn't find it. We heard this story later. So they picked them up and threw them in the ocean. Ooh. <laughs> off, off the cliff. Off the cliff, okay. <laughs> well, okay. that was some. But he ended up in, every, in all of these holes first, I oh. guess. He got thrown up. We could hear them hollering, you know, because they were only within maybe 40, 50 feet from us. Oh. Hmm. Well, there are a lot of different stories to tell, a lot of them. That's doesn't take off your shoes. <laughs> oh, how come? Not in combat. You never know when you got to run. Now, now what about uh, on, on the islands? What about uh, things like snakes or scorpions? Anything like that? The only trouble we had was mongoose. Really? You know what mongoose? They, yeah. kill, they kill the snakes. Yeah. They, they're so fast. You could take a, a stick that thick and put it in there, they could shoot at right, right in half. But their jaws were that strong. Mm. Yeah. We had them on the, in Hawaii. Yeah, a lot of them. Okay. If you got caught bringing a snake in Hawaii, that was a big fine and go to jail too. Because they could re reproduction fast. Uh -huh. There wasn't one snake in Hawaii. A lot of mongoose. Yeah. <laughs> we used to catch them. All right, well, thank you again. Pardon? I say thank you again. Oh, you're welcome.